Google has really been on a hot streak of evil lately. First, they rolled out the AI age verifications for YouTube, and now they've come out with the Pixel 10 lineup, which are honestly some of the worst smartphones ever in terms of price to performance. They're basically just relying on AI gimmicks at this point in order to sell these phones, and Google has also decided to stop sharing the device trees and the driver binaries for these devices, which are absolutely essential for the more heavy-duty modding that many people used to choose these phones for, like installing custom ROMs such as Graphene OS. And since Google has decided to just shoot themselves in the foot with their latest smartphones, I think they've decided to go ahead and take the rest of the Android ecosystem with them and try to just make it borderline pointless for people who enjoy Android for its customizability. And of course, Google is doing all of this under the guise of keeping users safe. I'm talking about Google's Android developer verification process, and Google says that this new process is going to be an extra layer of security that deters bad actors and makes it harder for them to spread harm within the Android ecosystem. So starting in September of 2026, Android is going to require all apps to be registered by verified developers in order to be installed on certified Android devices. So Google is, in a way, dusting off the old anti-terrorism gift wrap once again in order to cover up this mass surveillance campaign. They want us to think that the only way in order to prevent hacking and these cyber attacks in Android is to limit the user's ability to install whatever applications they want on the phone. They can only install apps that come from these so-called verified developers. And to become a verified developer, you've got to provide your personal information to Google. So you might even have to upload a copy of your personal ID, let them analyze your application. And of course, they have to make sure that your app is compliant with regional content bans in places like Brazil, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. And of course, you have to also give Google money in order to distribute your apps. Now, they don't explain the fees that developers have to pay here, but if all applications are gonna to have to be distributed through the Google Play Store, well, then you're gonna to have to pay $25, a $25 one-time registration fee to get a Google Play developer account in order to start the process of getting your app actually listed there for people to download. And if you were planning on making money from your app or selling in-game content or running ads on the application, well, then Google is also going to take a cut of all of that revenue. And I know I started this video by talking about how bad Google's hardware has become specifically, but this change is going to affect all devices that run Android, okay? If we click on this certified Android's devices link from the Android developer post, the whole squad is here. Every household brand that makes any Android device that beeps, buzzes, or lights up is already listed here as a certified partner. So this change that Google is making will essentially drop an iron curtain, not just over the smartphone ecosystem, not just over Google's phones, but over the broader smart device ecosystem. Over 3 billion devices are currently running Android, and the openness of Android software is originally what led to this widespread adoption in the first place. Whatever you want to make, whether it's a phone, whether it's a thermostat, a TV, you know, all TVs are smart these days, uh, whatever software that's user-friendly, doesn't cost you anything, or have restrictive licensing, is going to be super important to the process of distributing and producing those devices, especially the really cheap ones where, I mean, you know, if you had to bump up the price by $5 in order to recover the software licensing fees, then that could easily make your product one of the most expensive ones, and then you're gonna get beat out by the competition. Now, obviously, this verified developer program that Google is launching here is going to be used to gather the identities of developers, developers for Android specifically. But the spying is also going to trickle down into the user base because if people can't use F-Droid or manually install APKs onto their phone or from other sources, and they can't root their phone and they can't install a custom ROM to bypass these limitations, then people are just going to be stuck with these spooky spyware ridden versions of Android that ship with all of these devices. The default versions have so much spyware and tracking in them and they're gonna be stuck with downloading spooky spyware ridden apps 
from the Google Play Store. So Google isn't just doing this to assist the Google spyware campaign, but they're also doing this so that they can gather as much user information as possible to fuel their targeted ad network and to probably train their AI models since that's the hype right now. I mean, that's literally what is holding up the house of cards that is Pixel phones at this point, just AI hype. And limiting the user's freedom to control their devices, it doesn't just financially benefit Google, but every single Android certified partner listed here. Okay, these companies that make smart TVs, for example, um, especially the ones that own or collaborate with streaming services, they're gonna be able to limit the user's ability to install apps on those smart TVs so that they can watch pirated streaming services or BitTorrent software, because those apps usually are not found in the App Store. Uh, or when it comes to these freemium apps like YouTube or Spotify, you know, there's a free version, but you can pay for a better version. Uh, you could prevent the user from getting access to those premium features like ad blocking or downloading content and listening to the content while your phone screen is off. Most of the third party apps uh, that are out there that let you download YouTube videos or block ads on YouTube are just not available for you to use in the Google Play Store. And I think that Google's argument against people using third-party apps would be much more valid if they actually allowed people to pay for an experience that was legitimately better than what you can get with these third-party apps. Okay, for example, if you pay for YouTube Premium, you still get these sponsored banners that come up in the app or on the web page. Okay, you might not get the pre-roll ads, but you're going to get this crap unless you use an ad blocker, which blocks all of this crap for free. If you download a YouTube video through YouTube Premium to watch it offline, that video is only available for 29 days without you connecting to the internet. So say for example that you decide to do the right thing and you purchase YouTube Premium to download a bunch of videos that you're going to be able to watch on your tablet at night during a you know two month trip to a remote area where you're not going to have consistent internet. Well, you're going to get halfway through that trip and then you're going to lose access to all of the media that you downloaded that you thought was safe and secure on your own tablet. YouTube doesn't give you any legal option to own the media that they host, even when it has a Creative Commons license. You can't transfer the files between your devices. You can't watch the media with anything other than the YouTube app when you're logged into a premium account. And of course, you have that internet connection. So piracy just becomes a no brainer when all of the money in the world literally cannot buy you a similar experience to being a pirate and using these third-party apps. So hopefully, we're going to see more adoption of Linux as a back-end to these devices. There are Linux phones, like the Pine Phone and the Librem 5 by Purism, which unfortunately have severely lacking specifications compared to the modern smartphones. Although I will point out that both of these Linux phones do have expandable storage via an SD card. So you don't need four cameras, or if you don't need four cameras on your smartphone or a beefed up CPU in uh, GPU for stuff like mobile gaming, then you might actually be better off buying one of these Linux smartphones, not just for the privacy and freedom benefits, but expandable storage via an SD card is so much more cheaper and convenient than having to purchase a phone up front that has, say, a terabyte or more of online storage. The mainstream manufacturers are consistently making worse products that cost more money, have fewer features, and ultimately restrict your freedoms more and more. And the only way that we're going to be able to regain some ground here is by supporting the few manufacturers left that are actually creating open platforms.